Would you like to learn how to use a Bitcoin wallet from initial setup through to sending and receiving transactions, tweaking your settings to suit your needs, and some advanced features for power users? Today we're going to take a look at Blockstream Green, a ground up redesign of the old Green Bits or Green Address wallet. It's available for iOS and Android, boasts a ton of features, great security, and it's still accessible to new users of Bitcoin. I'm Ben with the BTC Sessions, and this is your daily session. Huddle the Bitcoin. Okay, so I am on my Android phone. I've already downloaded the green wallet or Blockstream green app. I also have Google Authenticator here, which we will be using in this demo. And I also have Samurai Wallet, which will be our other wallet that we will be interacting with. So I'm gonna go ahead, open up the app, and we get a few things on our main screen. Number one, in the center of the screen, it says Bitcoin, but you notice there's a little arrow for a dropdown. Now you can use the Bitcoin testnet, which is mostly for developers. So if you're brand new to Bitcoin, you don't need to worry about that. Also down below, you have connect through a proxy, uh, which helps with uh, your anonymity and connect with Tor. Uh, and this will encrypt basically everything you're doing. So really good job uh, for providing these options for Bitcoin users. In fact, I'm gonna turn on Tor right now and I'm gonna hit save. Now, before we get into the options down below, you may not have noticed, but in the top right-hand corner, there's a little eyeball that you can tap on, and it brings you to this page. And it says, log in via watch only to receive funds and check balance. And this is a way of setting up a secure wallet where, like it says, you can receive funds, watch the balance, but you cannot spend from it. So this is for people on the go that wanna be able to accept Bitcoin where, uh, on their phone, but they don't want the risk of losing their phone and thus losing their funds and having somebody access their wallet. So again, a really cool feature added in that we will touch on later. But for now, we're gonna take a look at getting set up. Now, if you have a previous wallet set up with Blockstream Green, you can, or really any other that has uh, a, certain, a certain set of previous seed words here. Those of you that are new to Bitcoin, again, don't get frightened off, but essentially this is where you would enter your wallet information to restore an old wallet that you may have. But we are not doing that. We're starting from scratch. So we're going to hit create new wallet. Now it's going to take you through a few things here. There are terms of service. I've already taken a look at them. So I'm going to hit, I agree and continue. Now, this is telling you to save your mnemonic phrase, newbies to Bitcoin. Essentially, what you're going to get here is 24 words that you are going to write down, keep safe. You're not going to store it on a phone or a computer or any online services. You're not going to take a screenshot and you're definitely not going to share this with anyone. You're going to keep it safe. It is your last line of defense, your only copy of recovering this wallet if something goes wrong. So keep it safe, treat it like cash. It then takes you to the screen and you're gonna get a series of words here. You're gonna just jot them down and there will be a quiz afterwards. It's gonna ask you what some of these words were. So we're gonna come back once I get to the end of my 24 words and we will regroup to see what that looks like. Okay, now that I have gone through my words, I have the option to set up a PIN number. Now this is definitely uh, advisable to do. I would highly recommend it for the purposes of this video. I'm gonna do something really simple. Um, you can skip if you like, but I'm not going to do this. It also gives you the option to reuse your Android's authentication. So if you already have a PIN number set up, it'll just reuse that. Uh, but I'm going to just set up a simple pin number here. Okay, congratulations, your wallet is now ready to use. You can go to wallet or do additional security. Now we will touch on additional security momentarily, so we're just gonna go ahead right into the wallet. Okay, let's take a look at what is in front of us. We have our main Bitcoin account. We have a Bitcoin balance. Below it, we have a US dollar or fiat equivalent. You can change that to your local currency. You also have your send and receive buttons. 
Down below, this is where your transaction list will be. So when you receive or send out transactions, they'll be listed here. Uh, above, there's a little multi-account button, and this is where you can add a new account. Now, this was just released, so the add account function is not ready yet, but it, I'm sure probably pretty quickly after I put out this video, it will be available. Now, outside of that, you have a few buttons down at the bottom. You've got your little wheel, your settings uh, cog down in the bottom left. You've got your main page here in the middle. And on the right, you have notifications. And this is telling me, hey, you should set up two-factor authentication for additional security. So you can switch between them by tapping them, but you can also swipe side to side on that main screen. Basically, we're just going to dive right in. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start doing transactions right away. Now, when you go to the receive screen, you get a couple things. You get your main address here represented as a QR code and as a string of digits. And this is the only information that an individual needs in order to send you money. Now, you can get somebody in front of you to scan this with their own phone, or you can tap on your address and it will copy it to the clipboard that which you can then paste into a text message an email really anything you like and send it off to the person that needs it you can also re request a specific amount and that will adjust this address to incorporate that information with it you can also change the specific amount by tapping on bitcoin and changing to your local currency if you prefer all right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're, we've already copied this by tapping on it. We're gonna navigate out of this wallet and we're gonna go over and we're gonna open up Samurai Wallet, which is another great wallet that I recommend you checking out. I did do a video for this, so I will link that down below as well. I will just enter my pin off screen. Okay, so we're ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead. Now, I'm not gonna dive too deep into exactly how this wallet works. If you wanna check out my video for that, you can. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and send off a transaction as somebody else would do. So I'm simply gonna paste in that address that I copied before, my own address, and I'm gonna send over 0 .00, 0 0.001 Bitcoin. All right, that is now sent off. And I will navigate back to Green Wallet, back to my main screen. And once that transaction comes through, it will be shown down below. Now, it does take a moment typically to pop up in Green Wallet. Uh, if I swipe down, that is how I refresh the screen. But we will return momentarily once it has popped up here and is showing on the main screen. So it didn't take very long, it was just a few extra seconds, maybe 30 extra seconds before I could see it on my main screen. But uh, we can now see a transaction is sitting there. It is listed as unconfirmed. Anybody unfamiliar? It usually takes around 10 minutes for a Bitcoin transaction to confirm on the network, but at times of high traffic that may take longer. Anyways, you can tap on the transaction itself and get all of the information there. You can see the amount, you can see the fiat or local currency equivalent. You can see the fee that was attached with it and sent with it. Um, you can see the estimated blocks until confirmation. So basically just take this number and times it by 10, about 10 minutes, okay? I can also see the hash of the transaction, just an identifier for the transaction. And furthermore, down at the bottom, there's something that says view in Explorer. And if I tab that, it takes me to uh, blockstream.info, which is a block explorer, a way to explore any transaction on the Bitcoin network. And again, it shows a lot of information, a lot of technical information about the transaction itself. It also shows interesting things like this transaction saved 33% on fees because it's using something called SegWit. And it could save a further 18% on fees by upgrading to another type of address called BEC32. If you're not super technical, don't worry too much about the details, but having a SegWit enabled wallet does save you on fees. Also privacy analysis, it says that it could be a coin join transaction, which further increases privacy. So all in all, you get a lot of information from the Blockstream 
Block Explorer, and it's a great tool. But let's head back to the wallet and head back to our main screen. So it's been a bit of time and our transaction is now confirmed. You can see below it, it now says two out of six confirmations. Um, why two out of six? Well, it's just a recommended measure of how long you should wait, especially for large value transactions before you consider it officially confirmed. But that said, with two out of six confirmations, I can go ahead, even with one out of six, I can go ahead and I can spend it elsewhere. So we're gonna practice sending half of this back to the Samurai wallet we were just in before. So I'm gonna go back out, I'll open my Samurai, and what I need to do here is I need to get an address to send to. And we'll take a look at what that looks like on the send screen of, of Blockstream Green. But I've just copied an address to the clipboard here. So we're gonna go over, we're gonna hit send. Now right away, it's gonna ask, do I want to allow my camera to take pictures and record video? And for this, yes, I do, because if there were a QR code, like when we received, if somebody's QR code were in front, I could scan it simply and it would get all the information needed to send a transaction. But in this case, I'm gonna be holding here and pasting in the address that I have taken from my Samurai wallet. That's all I need to do here. I'm just gonna hit add amount down at the bottom. Okay, so I can see the recipient listed. I can see how much would I like to send. And again, just like in uh, the receive screen, if I wanted to set an amount, I can tap BTC and change it to the local currency that I've designated. But in this case, I'm gonna send a, a Bitcoin amount. I also have an option to send all funds. And if I do that, it will just say all and it will be sending everything I have in the wallet. But I would not like to do that right now. I'm gonna set a specific amount. I'm gonna spend uh, half of what we initially brought into the wallet, so 005, okay? Um, now, down below, I also have the option of my miner fee. How quickly do I want this transaction to go through? Now, I don't really care. I don't mind if this one takes a while to confirm, so medium is fine for me. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select medium. It's already pre-selected. And I could set a custom fee there. If I hit custom, then you would just fill that in with the Satoshis per byte. And if you don't know what that is, uh, I did do a video on Bitcoin miner fees. I'll link that down below for you to check out. But for now, medium is fine. I'll hit review. It gives you all of the information, the amount you're sending, the fee you're sending, which account you're sending it from, and the address you're sending it to. And if you'd like for your own use, you can enter a note down below. And to send, all you need to do is down at the bottom, slide all the way across, and off it goes. And just to show in my Samurai wallet, if I refresh momentarily, I should see an incoming transaction. So again, it does take a few seconds to show up. Oh, there we go, right there. So there's the incoming transaction from my green address. Finally here, let's take a look at some of the settings. So we're gonna go over, now we already have a pin enacted, and now there's a toggle switch there, you can turn off the pin if you don't want to use it anymore. Um, now at the beginning of the video, I showed you on the main screen before you did anything, there was a little eyeball in the top right corner for watch only addresses. This is where you can set that up. So if you hit watch only login, it allows you to create a username and password that you can then log in on that screen and view your balance. So in this case, you could use that on any device and you would be able to view and receive. So I'm not gonna set that up right now, but it is an option for you there. Um, now logout will just take me back to my main screen. If I scroll down a bit, you have Bitcoin denomination. This allows you to shift the decimal place. So um, in Bitcoin, a single Bitcoin has 100 million tiny parts, the smallest of which is a Satoshi. But all of those denominations in between also have uh, names for them. So millibitcoin, there are a thousand millibits in a Bitcoin. So you can choose a smaller denomination. One thing I really want to see here is Satoshis because there has been a push towards using Satoshis, especially in the past uh, number of months with a lot of 
a lot of stuff happening around the Lightning Network. Um, I've covered some of that before. I'll link to some relevant videos be below. But anyways, uh, you can choose a different denomination here. I'm going to leave it as Bitcoin. Now, um, your reference exchange rate. So when you tap on this, you can choose, you can see there are options for US dollar and various exchanges where they might be pulling those prices from. There are also plenty of other local fiat currencies to choose from. I'm in Canada, so I have a couple different options for Bitcoin price here, um, but you can choose whatever suits you. A couple other interesting things here, default transaction priority. Remember how on the send screen I had the option of fast, medium, or slow? Well, you can set the default so it'll just, right now it obviously goes to medium automatically, but if I wanted to change that, I could change it. And same thing, default custom fee. When I hit custom, it defaults to one Satoshi per byte, but you can change that as well if you prefer. Now, Two-factor authentication, we're gonna dive into this. Two-factor is very, very important if you worry about the safety of the funds on this wallet. So when you go into two-factor, you have a few options, email, SMS text message, a call, or Google Authenticator. And so what this does is there is a key to your money on your phone when you create this wallet. What this does is it creates a secondary key and both keys are required in order to send the funds. Now, when I tap on Google Authenticator, it gives me a way of creating this second key um, and a way to unlock the second key. So I've already downloaded at the beginning, we have Google Authenticator sitting on my main screen. And essentially, if you had a separate device Within Google Authenticator, you could scan this QR code and create that special key, or you can go down and copy this text and do the same thing. So I'm gonna use the text because I'm only using a single device here. I'm just gonna hit the copy button. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead back to my main screen. I'm gonna open up Authenticator, and these are just codes. I'm not worried about sharing these because essentially it creates a special code that disappears every 30 seconds. And so these codes for other, you know, my Facebook or something like that, that disappears and then that code is no longer valid. So we're gonna set up a new one, a recycling code for my Blockstream green wallet. And it gives you the option here, scan barcode or enter the provided key. I'm going to call this just Blockstream. And then I'm gonna enter the key, I'm gonna paste it in. Now, of course, you guys are seeing the key here, uh, but I'm not gonna be using this wallet afterwards, not the one that I've set up. Anyways, I'm gonna create a new one because I've just given you the key to my two-factor authentication. So, note on privacy, do not share this code with anybody. I'm gonna hit add. And there we go, down at the bottom, I can see my Blockstream code. And to copy it, I'm just gonna hold and it copies it to the clipboard. I can navigate back to Green Wallet. It says, get code. And I can just paste it in and hit okay. And it's all set up, that's it. Now, it is also very advisable to set up a second two-factor authentication, which, which one you decide on is your choice, but we will get into the details about why you really should do that. If you set up one, you should set up two. Uh, we'll get into that at the end of the video. Anyways, we have two factors set up for one instance. There is something called a two-factor threshold, and that means how much should I be able to spend before it asks for that second key? So I can change that to any amount, but just for the sake of this video, because we wanna see what it looks like, I'm gonna set that to less than I have in my wallet. So 001, okay? I believe I have just shy of 0 0.005 left in the wallet. So I'm gonna change that to 0 0.001. It asks for my code to approve that change. So I'm gonna go back to Authenticator and I'm gonna copy that code because a new one has been created. And I'm simply gonna paste it in so that it approves that change and it has been changed now. Now you can request a reset of your two factor, but that is time locked. So um, we'll get into that at the end. I'm not gonna dive in right away. Anyways, further down your mnemonic. So the words that you wrote down at the beginning, you can display that. 
auto logout. So how long before I need to put in my PIN number to reaccess my wallet? Down here, I'm not gonna dive into PGP key, but SPV synchronization sounds complicated, but essentially it just means if you're running a full copy of the Bitcoin blockchain on your computer or dedicated device, you can synchronize your wallet with that copy so that you are self-verifying all of your transactions, meaning you're not relying on Blockstream to tell you if your transaction is legitimately on the blockchain, the Bitcoin blockchain. So how do you do that? All you do is you tap here, you're gonna hit enable SPV, and then down at the bottom, it says uh, only connect to trusted nodes. And you would tap that and you would simply paste in the IP address of the node you would like to connect to. So if you're running your own node, it will give you that information. You will have it handy to you. Uh, you can check out my video on the CASA node, which is a plug and play, pretty much pre-set up Bitcoin and Lightning Network node. Um, and yeah, you would just plug in that information there and you would then be self-verifying all of your transactions, even on mobile, which is super handy for power users of Bitcoin that really want to be self-sovereign. So again, great feature to have here. Outside of that, you've just got version number, terms of use, privacy policy, all the basics. Okay, now finally, we're just gonna try sending out all of the funds back to Samurai Wallet. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do two things. We're gonna use the send all funds button, but we're also gonna see what it looks like when I try to spend over the two factor authentication threshold that I set before. So I should be prompted to enter in my credentials, my special code from Google Authenticator in order to send the rest of this out because it's above the 0 .001 that I specified before. So first thing, Let's head over to our Samurai wallet and I'll just quickly add an address to receive to. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead, we're going to hit the send button. We'll paste in that address and hit add amount. And at this point, I'm gonna go, go ahead and hit send all funds and I'm gonna hit review. So this will send out everything in the wallet. Now it looks like everything's good to go, amount, fee, coming from my main account, going to the address I specified. When I slide to send, please provide your Google Authenticator code. Open up Authenticator, copy my code, paste it in, and it's sent. All off, ready to go. And that's pretty much it for navigating your way around the wallet. Um, let's just cap off with a couple things that I didn't get to in the walkthrough. Okay, so just a couple quick points to touch on here. One of which is you can use hardware wallets with this mobile wallet here. The ones that you can use currently on Android are the Ledger Nano S and the Trezor One with coming support for the new Trezor, the Trezor Model T, and the Ledger Nano X. Um, this is currently only on Android, but I believe that they will be also implementing it for iOS as well, at least for the Ledger Nano X, because it has Bluetooth. At least that's my inclination to believe. Um, they have done a video on this, that's why I didn't touch it here. I will link to that here, you're seeing a bit of it now, but essentially it just outlines how to execute a transaction with a device. Now the second thing I want to touch on is the way that two-factor authentication works with this wallet because it's different from what you may think. The way the Blockstream wallet works is it holds your key to your wallet on the actual device itself. Nothing new there. But when you enable two-factor authentication, it makes it so that your wallet has two keys, one on the device and one on their server. And depending on how you set it up, you at times need both keys in order to spend. We set up a threshold. We set up a 0 0.001 Bitcoin threshold where I could spend below that amount with just the key on my phone. Anything above that required two-factor authentication. And the way it works is Blockstream will only unlock that second key for you if you prove your credentials via something like the Google Authenticator or a code sent via text message to you or sent via email to you. 
So they still hold the key there, but you cannot, you cannot use that key until you prove your credentials through one of those methods. Now, this is actually set up in a contract with the specific wallet that you set up. So let's say I had a wallet and I had one Bitcoin in it and I set a limit where I could spend up to a certain amount with just the one key, but anything above that I would require both keys to spend. Well, if I lose access to one of the two factor methods, let's say I had my phone and it had Google Authenticator on it. Remember, I told you that it's a good idea to put more than a single method of two-factor authentication. Because if I only had Authenticator set up and I lost this phone, sure, I could go ahead, I could get a new phone, I could download the app, we have our backup phrase, I could put that back in, but I don't have access to the Authenticator code anymore because that was unique to this device. And if I didn't have a second method set up, the contract is done such that your funds will not be movable with just the single key on your device for an entire year. Now that sounds scary, but it's meant to protect you from somebody stealing your mnemonic phrase, which you wrote down, and being able to spend your funds. So you can safely store your mnemonic phrase, but after the fact, if somebody were to take it, they still wouldn't be able to spend over that threshold. They wouldn't be able to move the funds because it's locked in a contract. So let's take a look at if we had two different types of two-factor authentication. In this scenario, again, I lose my phone. I get a new phone. Now, with my phone company, I can get my phone number restored. And maybe my second type of two-factor authentication was an SMS text message. Well, now, in order to move my funds, I can go ahead, get that text message to send through, and use my phone to move the funds. Same thing with email. I still have access to email. Or again, with a phone call, they can call and tell me my code, and I can use that for two-factor. So essentially, this is just a way to really lock down your funds, and at the same time, Blockstream, yes, they have one key. Is that dangerous? No, because for the large spends, only both keys together in tandem will be able to move the funds. And for the small spends that you've designated, only the key on the phone will work for that. Their key does nothing other than cooperate with your other key to send to the designated address that you've set. So at no point can Blockstream actually spend your funds. And this is kind of an interesting security feature that I haven't seen in really any other wallet. So really cool to see that. Um, and it does make me feel quite a bit more secure uh, about funds on my phone. Um, so kudos to Blockstream for implementing that. I think that's a really cool feature to play around with. And I look forward to playing around with it more. So guys, let me know what you thought of Blockstream Green. Play around with it, take a peek, play with some of the features and comment down below to let me know if you had a good time, if you think it could use improvement, and really any other comments that you had. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw here today, please, if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe, hit the like button if you enjoyed it, share it around, and also, if you're new, be sure to hit that little bell notification icon. Whenever these things air for the first time, I'm always in the sidebar chatting with people as it airs. So be sure to pop in there next time and say hello. Other than that, Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow for your daily session.